Um, so as soon, as soon as you, are you on the Wine to Wine Show page? We're live! Holy cow! Um, once you see the show go live, share it to your page. Feel free to invite friends. What is going on Facebook? The show is live! You'll also want to bring the volume down to your phone because I always forget to do that. We're looking for the show right now so we can share it to all our friends. There it is! Uh. Okay, come on, so there we go. Share. How y'all doing, Facebook? We want to welcome you to the Wine No Wine Show, the fastest growing live feed show on Facebook. That's right. This is an awesome, we're cool kind of a note. First show to break 4,000 views last week. Woo! Yeah! Every week this show is growing. And you know why? Because America has a problem and we're aiming to fix it. You see, I call it the zero to Nazi effect. That's how long does it take in any given conversation to go from zero to you're a Nazi. I'm going outside to burn down your car. <laughs> it's crazy, people. So this show is all about bringing people different views, different backgrounds together over a great glass of wine, to have a good time as friends, to talk about all the stuff that everybody says we're not supposed to talk about. Religion, politics, we'll cover it all while drinking alcohol. What could go wrong? <laughs> so I'm going to introduce you guys to a great bottle of wine, and then I'm going to let our guests introduce themselves. and. Since I pay them absolutely nothing other than great wine, I give them the opportunity to have a shameless plug for whatever they want to promote. So if they have a business or whatever else, you're going to get to hear about it. Today's wine is called The Bridge. It's a very cool wine. I don't know if you can zoom in on that enough, Ash, but uh, <laughs> it's called The Bridge, and it is a Cabernet Sauvignon Syrah blend uh, from California. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to trying this wine out. Uh, it sounded really delicious. It's pretty. It's pretty. The label is really, really pretty. Uh, and and it's um, in Australia, actually, is where this became a thing, uh, combining the Cabernet and the Syrah grape together. It's really a kind of unusual pairing, but it's really taking off. And so uh, now we're starting to see some of the big labels in California uh, follow suit. And so I'm really interested to try this out and see how it is. At the end of the show, we're going to rate it and give it a grape rating. And uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, find more about this wine uh, as the week comes later on. So anyway, without further ado, Kwame, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, and yeah. whatever else you want to have a shameless, shameless plug for. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not shameless stuff. Hey, everybody. My name's Kwame Jackson. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas, locally here. live kind of up the street. Uh, I'm a scientist. I'm an activist. I'm an entrepreneur and a father of a beautiful two-year-old baby girl. And um, that was a little bit of biology science. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I'm uh, just really looking forward just to saying. being on the show. Excited <laughs> to be here. Uh, I I love wine personally. Uh, that's really what mm -hmm. sold me on on the uh, invite. You know, I, seems to work. <laughs> seems to work. I thought you wanted to know about you know you know my thoughts and stuff, but really the reason I came was you know for, for the wine. So I look forward to expressing that as well. I do express myself fairly well when. Yeah. When drinking when wine. Alcohol <laughs> <laughs> at least you feel that way, right? Yeah, at least I, feel, I, feel like I, I always feel like a genius right. when I'm drinking wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No motivations there. So, uh. Yeah, I'm uh, preparing for a PhD in neuroscience. And, wow. And, um, just what? PhD in neuroscience. Get yeah. down. He literally is a brain scientist. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, hope to, I hope I can offer some great perspective for you guys today and... Uh, that's all I got to say. And wow, that is cool. My page, I'm, my name is Kwame Jackson. Just so search that on uh, Facebook and you'll find it. Yes. If you're having any trouble finding him, just add the. The. There's actually one Kwame Jackson a little bit more famous than I am at the moment. Oh, yeah. well. He was on The Apprentice with Yeah, uh, at the moment. Yeah. That wasn't you? No. <laughs> I have to talk to my uh, scheduling people. I totally thought that's, totally thought that's who we were getting here. I'm, my, my mistake. 
<laughs> so All right. Take a drink on that. Kate, yes, feel free to take a sip. Yes, Kate, introduce yourself. I'm I'm Kate Davis. Um, I'm the graphic designer of the group, not the uh, neuroscientist. <laughs> uh, different levels there. No, um, I own Crescent Creative Group, which is a branding and design firm, and I'm also here for the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a stunt double. Yes. Um, we have really? someone oh. else. <laughs> is it, is it really? No. Um, I'm holding the chair down for about half the show until we have another guest who's going to be coming in. She's a surprise. True, true, to, true story. This is uh, <laughs> this is our first WWE edition of the show. There will be an official tag in uh, at, at at some point during the show. So I just realized right now all the lights in the studio are set up perfectly. Uh, one of those requires that it's right behind the door. <laughs> So, at some point, one of the guests may open the door, just knock over lighting. <laughs> Could be complete chaos. WWE during the, style. Yes, yeah, yeah, WWE, WWE style <laughs> during the show. Make sure the wine goes. So, yeah, so <laughs> everybody hang out to your wine. <laughs> Watch your wine carefully. Also, she's probably going to be drinking out of my glass before this door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Another detail. Another detail. You, you can tell we don't have a lot of guests tag teaming in. First time. Yes, first time. First time. So uh, we'll see how it goes. That's that <laughs> interesting detail. So here's what you do. You'll drink yours, take your glass with you, watch it. <laughs> Bring it back for the other guests. <laughs> We go through a lot of glasses around here because we start drinking before the show starts. So, <laughs> if you're wondering why we're all in such a great mood, we, we're already well into drinking. So. <laughs> We've had a few glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, folks. Deal with it. So, oh, shameless plugs. You get those in already? Oh, uh, yeah. I plug my business. You can okay. search uh, Crescent Creative Group on Facebook. Crescent Creative. Yep. And uh, I think that was my plug. Yes. So. All right. <laughs> Gwen. Hey, hi everybody. Oh, my name is Gwena Lang Chain, and um, I am a kingmaker in relationships and businesses. Yeah. <laughs> we have a kingmaker, <laughs> a brain scientist, <laughs> gets, and, and a graphic designer. I, I, that's the pro proper lingo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> graphic designer. You got it down much quicker than my dad did. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> but I'm going to use this opportunity to first, I want to express my gratitude towards all these people um, helping out post-Hurricane Harvey and um, businesses, um, everybody, pretty much a lot of communities and neighbors and friends and families who have been involved, greatly involved to do something, you know, and help others. And I'm just so thankful that we have so many good citizens, um, Samaritans, in, in our city. And second, I want to encourage more small, medium-sized, or large, possibly, businesses to get involved and contribute because there are so, so many victims out there, and they, it's so much work. I mean, personally, my place is not destroyed, but I've seen videos and pictures of other people's homes just completely destroyed or submerged under the water, and it's so much work. And, and they they need help. It's so expensive. It's just way too expensive. So any help we can get, I, I believe we'll all be very thankful to your support and your contributions. So Absolutely. Wow. Here, here on that one. Cheers. <laughs> that was not shameless at all. Yes. <laughs> Well, that was my first sip, and that is tasty. Very good. I was going to say that wow. was a moment of silence for us all to wow. yeah. I don't want to bias you because we vote at the end, but that was that was uh, pretty tasty. Yeah. All right. Well, I am the random guest of the show today. Um, my friend Kwame invited me here. So my name is Lawanda Turner, and I am a handbag model. Yay! <laughs> so um, this is a friend of mine designed this bag. It's called Keep the Collection. And this morning, I had the pleasure of modeling her handbag for her. So um, she's a very lovely lady. Please support her. And uh, personally, what I do is I am a personality. So my role is to express my ideas on social media. My Instagram is Lawanda Glam. And <laughs> so I just want to make the world a more beautiful place for everyone. Right and on. I do that through inspiring women, helping them to be confident, 
helping with makeup and hair care and things of that nature. But I'm just here to, to bring the, the beauty and the excitement. And Social media diva. <laughs> I like it. And all of that. So follow me. I'm trying to get up to um, 10,000. So Lawanda Glam. Lawanda Glam. And, and what was the lady who uh, makes the handbags? Kisa. K -I it's Kisa like Lisa. So K-I-S-A. K-I-S-A? Mm -hmm. so in, in, invoice Kisa Ashley. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, got a random bill, random yes. bill showing up. Yes. Sponsorship on the Wine No Wine show. What is that? What is this? Thousand dollars? Absolutely. Yes, I will settle out of court, Key. So don't worry. It's uh, I'll take. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we talking about today, guys? Have we decided? Did we decide? Uh, you know. This is, it's been an interesting day, I will say. You know, as Gwen already talked about with the hurricane, the hurricane has obviously uh, made life interesting in Houston. So I've got a couple of guests coming across from across town. Uh, for what would normally be an hour drive for them, it's like now a two hour drive for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I've got guests showing up at 5.30 and coming in. And I had a topic that was added to the uh, list today um, right, you know, this morning, and after people were voting, this this DACA thing or DACA, however we're saying it, uh, is hot on everybody's name or hot, hot on everybody's <laughs> on name, hot on everybody's uh, uh, list, and they want to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it. And admittedly, I don't know that much about it. Uh, and all of our current guests have said we don't know that much about it, but that doesn't stop us from talking about it, right? <laughs> so we definitely need you guys to chime in. This is uh, a big aspect to the show, guys, in that uh, you are as much a part of the show as the guests who are on the show. So please chime in and comment and be a part of the show. So I'm going to mention uh, Cindy. Cindy Goodson is going to be on the show. She shouted out, said, hey, she's on her way here. Uh, Glenn Hafner. Glenn said, love the wine show. Uh, but very hard to watch with everyone just staring at their screens. <laughs> I guess that's I guess that's a new standard, but I'm uh, but not a fan. All right, uh, Glenn, mm -hmm. I will let you know uh, sure. that there's a reason for that. Actually, prior to the show, uh, and once I have interns who I can abuse, uh, I will make them do this. Uh, we are inviting people via our social media tool uh, to the show. So while I'm looking down at the screen. My I'm, hand bottle over here. I'm actually, <laughs> yes, th thank you for modeling the phone. That's great. I'm actually inviting, Thanks. I'm actually inviting my friends to the show so that uh, we will increase the views on the show. So eventually I will have unpaid, uh, you know, 13 year olds behind the camera uh, who are getting life experience for their resume uh, and uh, they will do that for me. But for now, I have to do it myself. So that's what that's all about. Um, Julia, my fave. I don't even know what you said my fave to, but here, yeah. cheers. Can you see my name? Kate <laughs> Davis. My oh, fave. Kate Davis, my that's fave. Me. Oh, all right. <laughs> that's my bestie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Randall, so Kate Davis, fan favorite. Uh, <laughs> sure in. Brother, thanks for tuning in, man. I, I hope you got some good comments on the subject, Torian. We're going to be talking about DACA. And uh, is it a good idea to, to keep it in force, a bad idea, pros and cons? Chime in, please, because we need your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Um, keep going, scroll. Lamont, great show, Joe. Ah, thanks for tuning in, Lamont. Always love having you on the line. Uh, drop your comments. Appreciate you being here. Randall said, where are you, guy? Where are you? <laughs> where are you, guy? Right here. <laughs> where are you, guy? I have... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> all right. W was that all the comments, Ash? You got it? Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So, <laughs> normally. He was, he was here probably there early. So probably so. Waiting. Oh, probably so. Yeah. Probably so. Probably so. Uh, so, traditionally, this is what we do at the beginning yeah. of the show. Uh, we give everybody the opportunity to kind of, you know, one minute sum it up. What's your thoughts uh, on DACA and good idea or bad idea? And since you, like, uh, may have you know unfamiliarity with it, whatever. Yeah, we're dealing with illegal immigration. Uh, should we have a pathway to citizenship? Uh, should we be deporting? Uh, we can be general in our thoughts about this. 
So it's perfectly okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure at least on that level we can all kind of uh, chime in. Uh, so anyway, going around the room, kind of a bullet point thought, one minute or less, uh, what is your view on where we're at with um, illegal immigration and, and, and how we deal with it? So we want to talk about illegal immigration just in general or sure. specifically? Related? I mean, if you have specific thoughts yeah. on, on the DACA thing, sure. Um, well, based on my understanding of immigration in general, I'm not you know, such an advocate as most people would be or maybe expect me to be for massive amounts of immigration. I believe that, you know, each part of the world is kind of designed for a certain amount of people and that if you overflow one certain area, every other area doesn't get to be established and built up um, like it may need to be uh, to be able to serve and provide for whatever amount of people. So not to say that if people are here and we have enough here to take care of and provide for, and it's not like they're just here laying on the, on the ground or, you know, say they're doing a decent amount of the work that we're, we're benefiting from. And so, darn you know, ground layers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so my, my personal perspective on just, I guess, relations to the diff people in general okay. um, is, you know, I don't really see anyone as different or as separate from the rest of us. And so there's no, for me, need to at least get, you know, emotional about we don't want them there as if there's like... I um, definitely don't there. like them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that, I'm that, very anti-them. Yeah, same. Same here. And, yes. and so, so any, any you never can't of, trust um, them. When, whenever, whenever it gets kind of like that and, and it gets a little romantic, so to speak, about this is my America and nobody else can... Them it. are attractive. Yeah. So I will give them that. I'm actually getting a little confused. <laughs> them are attractive? No, but so... But what I really want to say is that... <laughs> Quit messing him up. Stop. With, with Poor guy. guy. <laughs> no, so, so with, with, He's a doctor with the or a surgeon. Thing. What are you? A scientist. Just scientist. Yeah. I'm not trying to get inside there. He's um, a doc doctor, surgeon, scientist. <laughs> yeah, we're working on the scientist part. Um, Sorry. But no, Lawyer. so if, if there is a pathway available and it's, I guess everyone is benefiting, that's the United States, that's the illegal immigrants who were brought here by their parents before they even actually knew they were doing anything wrong. Um, I, that to me that makes sense. Now, if it's overloading our system and we can't provide for it, then okay, I would get it. But if not, well, then why not? That's my that's my stance on it. Um, I don't think it should be something that we should be taking a lot of our time and our attention to address because I think we have a lot more other things that we could <laughs> be spending a lot of our time and attention on addressing. Okay. Yeah. So we had two two comments that I want to to point out. Um, or actually, uh, three. Uh, one one for humor's sake. Uh, mm -hmm. Lamont said, we love the kids. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, that is a real point. Uh, we have kids that we're dealing with. That's definitely a thing. Uh, Robert Jeter III, who is going to be on the show, he's a scheduled guest for a future date, said on DACA, every great civilization is destroyed when its population loses respect for its sovereignty. There's an interesting dun, comment. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, we can discuss that. Mm -hmm. uh, Don Kozlowski. Don, Don, I've been a friend of yours for like 30 years. Uh, very good friend of mine. Uh, just realized, Don, your name is hard to say after the third <laughs> glass of wine. So, uh, Don Kozlowski. There we go. Uh, I'm, I'm for the law is the law. If you want more immigration, then change the law. Until then, illegal is illegal. Hillary herself said to send the children back. Bye bye. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah, Don is like just fanning the flames. <laughs> uh, Torian said, as a service member, there will be many things I can speak can't speak my mind on, but I will say that our elected representatives, Congress, need to stop kicking the can down the road. Oh my God! That's a one clinkable moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise glasses to that, that comment, right? They need to kick, stop kicking, kicking the, the can, can down, down the road, road because that's absolutely what they've done for a very long time. Uh, the 20 years ago, uh, we had that. Uh, uh, 30 years ago, shoot, even longer, almost 40 years ago, uh, Reagan time period. Uh, they created amnesty. They said, "Oh, this is gonna be the one-time fix. We're done." Uh, and here we are 40 years uh, later dealing with the same issue because in reality they never dealt with the problem. Uh, they, they created a simple solution and now here we are again 40 years later dealing with the problem. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was try actually trying to do that. I kept missing the button. Uh, <laughs> that anyway. glass of wine. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I totally get that. Stop kicking the dang can down the road 100%. There needs to be a long-term solution and soon. We vote members of Congress into office to legislate, and in the last five years, they have not. Hold them to the fire. You know what? Uh, I will be very honest about this and very transparent about this. I did not vote for President Trump. I also did not vote for Hillary Clinton. Um, I did vote. So figure that out. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I will say that I think that a very large reason that we have the current president in office that uh, is in office is because of that very point. A large segment of the population is very sick and tired of electing officials into office who run on one thing and then never do anything. Uh, they get there, get ni nice, cushy, and cozy, collect the paycheck, and all they focus on, on is re-election. And when you've got guys and gals who've been sitting in Congress for 30 darn years, uh, mm -hmm. we have career politicians, and that was never intended by our founding fathers. Uh, so, yes, I could not agree with you more, Torian. That is a clinkable moment, like I said. That's a glass raise worthy comment. Thank you, sir. All right, so. Um, I don't even want to finish with my glass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, see, I've been talking too much. That's, yeah. that's, that's a clear sign. Um, so, Kate, chime in now. We've had a lot of thoughts. I will say, and it's a little embarrassing to admit, I don't really know quite enough about, I haven't personally experienced much, is a better way of saying it. Not that I don't know. I haven't personally experienced much with immigration, whether it be legal or illegal or anything like that, the DACA. I don't know a whole lot about it. So for me to form an opinion is a little bit difficult. I will say that I do definitely agree with the law is law, illegal is illegal, that type of situation. If it's going about the right direction, and again, if it's helping our economy, all of that, then I don't see a problem with it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a weird, big answer. <laughs> okay, we accept weird and vague. <laughs> We're weird and vague tolerant. <laughs> weird and vague tolerant, thank you. I'm also the world's slowest reader, so while I appreciate you giving me some facts to look at, I did not read a single one of them. See, my daughter is doing a great job. She's and, doing wonderful. And, I and, just and putting all it. sorts of facts on the screen for us drinking people who are not wearing glasses to read. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Thank wonderful. You. That's great. And yeah. she just massively enlarged the font on the screen. Yeah, like 500%. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah. My daughter has a sense of humor, too. So. Uh, I wonder whose kid she is. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Yes, I wonder whose kid she is. Yes. Um, so, anyway, uh, Gwen, thoughts? Yes. Okay, I want to respond to one of the, uh, a couple of those comments. First, I want to respond to. Rob, I think, about um, losing sovereignty. Well, that's when we have revolutions. When when our uh, when the citizens and the populations are losing respect for the sovereignty, that's when revolutions happen. And I feel like, you know, I'm not encouraging revolution at this moment, but I mean, um, you sure? Are. That's what I was hearing. Brings about <laughs> brings about great changes and progress. Actually, put the gun up. Put the gun up. <laughs> and and. It's because the government is not giving us what we need and what we want, and um, the government is uh, perhaps being a little bit too selfish and too political, and that's when revolutions happen, and that's when uh, citizens lose um, you know, respect for sovereignty. And then second, the for to respond to, I believe it was about the law is the law. Who said the law is the law? Uh, uh, I repeated it. Don Kozlowski. Don, okay, Don. With all due respect, the law is the law. We have the legal system, you know, intact, and then the law is to punish the whoever does wrong, and the, to punish criminals, and to establish rules and regulations. Right now, the law, the previous law, was to 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 make sure good people stay. You know, good people like scientists. We want scientists to stay. We want entrepreneurs to stay. We want good people, productive people to stay. People who are gonna promote our economies to stay. That's the whole point of the law the, the, from the previous, you know, uh, administration. And now they changed all that. They, it's, to me, um, 
they're surprised because as a business person, to me, that's not very strategic. You're pretty much sending everybody away, uh, irregard I mean, regardless whether they're, they could be good for the economy, good for this country or not. They could be, one of them could be the next president. It is very good for things. the boot industry, though. <laughs> they, could, they could do great things for this country, and they don't consider that. And then, and then my last <laughs> point terrible, is, right now we have uh, the, the reason why most people voted for Trump. Okay, probably not most, but a lot of people, a lot of intellectuals, they voted for Trump because, because we're, we're afraid of terrorists. So, uh, why are we tar focusing on protecting this country from terrorists, and why are we trying to send, you know, le uh, ch good citizens away, just packing them, sending them away, and establishing laws to, to make sure they're, they're no longer here, when we should be protecting our border, uh, making sure no more terrorist attacks happen, like, like what they do to your Euro European countries. And at the same time, you know, we just, we're having horrible hurricanes. Uh, you know, one just passed and then the other one is coming, Irma. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to making sure our citizens are, are protected, you know, um, evacuated, make, uh, making sure we should be doing something to protect the residents and citizens here in this country. Why are we thinking about like sending just massive people away. We have better things to worry about right yeah, exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. Priorities, yeah. Right. You've got priorities all wrong. Well, mm -hmm. I just want to say I want to thank President Trump for the weather we've been having in Houston for, <laughs> for the last couple of days. It's oh, been it's very been nice. Been amazing. So, uh, thank, yeah, thank you, President Trump. Hashtag <laughs> thinkable moment. <laughs> Make it easy. Got his hand on the weather button, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Sorry for you folks in Florida. I don't know what y'all did to piss him off, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Someone commented, an unjust law is no law at all. <coughs> Lamont was. Lamont, yes. Uh, unjust law is no law at all. Um, I will absolutely agree with that statement. Uh, I would say that there is always a process to... Uh, avail yourself of an unjust law uh, in a republic that uh, we are. Um, and so you have the, do we uh, just revolt against the law or do we exercise the, the process? Um, I think that's really a, a big part of the question that's at hand. Um, so um, Joseph Mankato said, who is the girl in red? <laughs> at this point, I can warn you that Joseph is going to hit on you. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, <laughs> oh, Thank Joseph you. has been on the show a few times. He's a great guy. He, he, uh, his, uh, his humor gets himself into trouble all the time. I'm just telling you. He does not put the shovel down. He embraces the shovel. He will just keep digging that hole. <laughs> um, so uh, we had, uh, uh, well, okay, Don said the, the previous administration didn't make a law. They made an executive order. Uh, done right, and this is something we were talking yeah. about before the show, yeah. uh, done right, the previous administration would have made a law and it couldn't just be canceled, right? Again, laws. If you think we should ignore immigration law, how about we ignore pedophile laws okay. or murder laws or speeding? Uh, you, you can't pick and choose. And so that is going back to his statement where he said the law is the law uh, and that we have a process for changing the law. If we don't agree with the law, there's a process for it. Um, so. Again, that's the whole, do we ignore it and kind of revolt against the law, or do we engage the system and the process and try to go down that road? Um, and, and Lamont is saying the process, of course. Uh, I, you know, Lamont, I, that's my answer, but I would say not everybody agrees with that. Uh, some people feel that like the system and the process uh, has failed them. And uh, they, they're at a point where uh, they no longer want to engage the system because the system doesn't listen. Uh, so uh, there's that frustration to deal with as well. Um, let's see, Russell, that's not a compliment. Oh, I'm not no, sure you okay, I know Russell, Russell. Russell, you're my friend. You're supposed to be my friend. But <laughs> so I respect 
respect, I respect if your opinion is different from mine, but still, you're not making an argument here. You're just telling me to give me more wine so, so I can stop making bad decisions. Uh, well, I, I'm dying to hear your argument, your counter-argument against mine. Torian, so. Torian, ever being the gentleman that he is, was standing up for Gwen's uh, 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 you. You know, dignity as a woman. <laughs> Torian, good, good job. Thankfully, she knows Russell, and Russell was just giving her a hard time. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. Nice set. That's a stretch. Uh, I don't. What's a stretch? Tell. What's a stretch? Tell me. Uh, I missed that. So Lamont, clarify. Uh, what's a, what's the stretch? Um, and we didn't get your. My opinion. Okay. Well. Sum up. Your opinion. I just want to say that I definitely agree with Mr. Don um, that the law is the law. We. Um, I don't want to say people break the law all the time, but politicians, um, president, the president hasn't released his tax returns. And, you know, people do what is comfortable for them at the time. And I think that the idea that coming to America is the only way that you can have a happy, successful life needs to change because people can achieve the quote-unquote American dream in Mexico or in, you know, Spain or wherever they're immigrate. Or, I didn't mean to say Mexico and Spain, but, you know, like, <laughs> Italy or where, wherever they're from. Um, countries, there's this image that we are just so far above our technology, our education system, and that creates an unnatural, like, influx of people so that we're here and we're, we see uh, the whatever the negative results are. Like, I agree with you. I haven't had, had any, like, a lot of negative experience with immigrants or positive or anything except for friends and neighbors. And I do think that no one should just be put in a, a boat and just shipped back to a certain country. There should be a process for making them legal. But um, it should also, we should address the idea and the stigma of, you know, like I'm from New Orleans and I actually Im immigrated. Another country. I'm from a whole other country. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> the French Quarter. And I actually... <laughs> Right? That Obviously, the folks in Katy. Oh my God. What did they do? I don't know. Have y'all been writing him? I mean, like, what's going on? It's, it's horrible. The thing is, they knew that it was going to smash Katy. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. How did uh, they know? We could have a whole discussion on it. There's actually a. We should change the topic. Yeah, we could change the topic. Let's talk about hurricanes. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was, I mean, there was literally an article submitted to the city mm -hmm. uh, about. The areas that would flood in the event of a hur Hurricane Harvey type situation, right. like no literally evacuated. detailing the areas that would flood. Yeah. They've known for thirty years. They did nothing. They kicked the freaking can down the road. Yeah, that's that's wild. That was wild to me. I mean, I yeah. mean I'm empathetic to them not wanting to evacuate a whole city because of what happened. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. 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 I, I'm not one area. And not wanting to cause yeah. panic. One area. So. Say, hey guys, go go like to Kingwood or well, Kingwood in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It was so much I mean, Blood people balance. was okay until they Bad um, example. until they uh, they they Release gave themselves down. a lawsuit situation and they uh, you know opened those floodgates yeah. to flood Kingwood instead mm -hmm. of the woodlands. Oh, so yeah, yeah. 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 wow, a whole, a whole nother subject, whole nother subject. I'm actually, I'm actually from I'm actually from Kingwood. So. Yes, he's actually from Kingwood. Okay. So yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, we have a new guest. A new guest. Yeah. Okay, Kwame, Are if you will meeting? grab the uh, the light and yeah, move it over so that she can get in. There we go. Okay, we're good. Come on. Okay. All right. Kate to has to go. We have to tag. This out. is our WWE moment. Kate All is right, gonna. Hey. Kate Woo! is gonna tag out. Yes. Yeah. Great first okay. half of the show, Kate. I have to. You have to tag me out. <laughs> okay. Yes. You have to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to wash my glass. So you if you could do water. a backflip, it would be cool. <laughs> I'm going to bring you a clean glass in a moment. Can yes. You <laughs> the best? So Can you will get at least a glass of water. All right. Yes. Yeah. That's all is I that need. good on the angle right here? Yeah, uh, uh, put it on the dots if you can, the black oh, okay. dots, Sam. I put them on the floor oh, to, just for that reason. So I can, yep, you got it. Look at you go. But, but she's coming back, though. Uh, she's coming back with a glass of wine. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's yeah, coming back with yeah. a glass. So oh, yeah. we're terrible at this. Um, I'm just going to like, have her crack the door okay. open and grab it. So 
So if you can go back to the comments, Ash, I want to see some of this. Cindy, uh, I don't know how much of this you've got to watch. I've been watching. Okay. I've been tuned in. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like you to have the opportunity to share quickly what your thoughts are uh, on uh, the whole DACA situation, illegal immigration. Uh, you can be specific or general on that subject. Because, uh, you know, a lot of us have expressed, and I'm, I'm sure this is not uncommon for a lot of people, we don't know all the ins and outs of, of DACA and what's going on with it. I just know general points. So, uh, yes, he's, he's tuning in, and as, as always, Torina is making some great points and uh, even defending Gwen's honor here. Uh, um, so, yes, come on in. Yes, come on in. There we Here's go. Here's your clean glass. Thank Here's your clean Kate. glass. You absolutely rock, sister. So, do we have backup bottles or? Right. Right. She probably I, wants a refill. She gets the most. You'll have to deal with your your second glass going dry. It's okay. We'll we'll get more after the show. <laughs> All right. So, what are your thoughts? Where are you at on this? Oh wow! I you know what? I I don't really know where I am with this. Um, what I do know, what I do feel, just as a general from a general perspective, is. Um, illegal immigration has, well, how, how has our bottom line been affected either way, both ways? Um, in terms of the DACA project or whatever, I ha I'm not, I'm so not uh, in tune or enlightened, so you guys are going to have to enlighten me more about that, but my, the facts? Oh. Show me the facts. Show me the facts. Oh, yeah. Keep going because I want to get to the comments. So, it's, it's, um, it's just, it's, it's too big. It's, it's a big, big deal. And I think that if people have been um, afforded an opportunity to live, to be born in America, and they're, like, for example, illegal immigra immigrants who have children here, um, and now they're, They've, they've set their lives up here and they've raised their children and their families have been expanded and they've been, they've been blessed as a result and they have also contributed value to our bottom line. Um, and it's, that's where I'm at with it. The, the value statement speaks the volume, speaks the most to me. So let me ask you a question. We have some, a, a lot of great comments, so I want to get to these comments. Uh, but I also want to ask this question to the, to the panel. Um, I think it was Torin. Uh, I'll, I'll give this comment and then and then uh, um, uh, get to my question because it kind of plays together. Torian said, uh, "I agree with you. However, the president releasing his returns is not a law." So you were talking about that earlier. There's a tax law. Like, right. You have to file it a certain way. It's not. They have to file. But you right. Don't have to release it. Don't have to release it. That's just something that presidents have done in an interest of transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a law. They literally don't have to. Oh. Uh, so he was just tossing it in. Uh, but here's the comment that I wanted to get to. You said, America is built on immigration. If you just look at the set, this panel, uh, you can see what makes America great. Mm. I agree. Uh, it is the only country you can visit that has this diversity. I believe people should seek the American dream legally, but we shouldn't forget that we are all immigrants in this country. Yeah. Hello, Cindy! Hey. <laughs> hey. So, well. so here's, here's my question on that comment, because I think that's really a great comment, and it's kind of touching on a point that I, that I, I, I like to bring up. Uh, I've seen an absolutely great demonstration uh, with gumballs, uh, believe it or not. That's what I was referring to. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, talking about the world population and the percentage of the, of the world population that lives in poverty and this sort of thing, and how much of that population America represents and how much of that we can influx into America. Basically, the, the sum of the argument was to demonstrate that the amount of immigrants we can take into our economy is a blip on the radar when it comes to dealing with the billions who live in poverty worldwide. We can't, it's physically impossible, it's economically impossible to take in all the world's poor and employ them and give them a standard of living that we currently expect as Americans. That goes right. back to my point about everyone wanting to come to one country versus creating opportunities where they are. Yes. So my question is, at, at what point, right, it, I, is it realistic that we could open our borders 
and take in everyone who wanted to come? Is it uh, doable? At what point do we as a sovereign nation say we have a flood of people coming in who have, have broken the law to get in, right? At what point do we put our foot down, so to speak, as a nation and say we simply can't support anymore, right? There's X number of jobs to be had. There's, uh, you know, the X number of land, X, you know, et cetera. Uh, at what point do we say, for the good of the, the greater whole who is already here, we can't take any more, yeah. right? Yeah. We, we have to have a cap at some point. There's, there's 7.6, 7.8 billion people in the world. Like half of them live in poverty, abject, wow. abject poverty. So if all like 3.8 billion people wanted to come here and they decided, let, let's pretend for a moment that they had the means to get here and they were willing to break our law to do it. And now instead of the 30 to 40 million people that we have currently living in the United States illegally, now we have 3.8 billion. Yeah. At what point do we say, I'm willing to deport yeah. I'm willing to send out uh, population because the population who's already here by taxes and everything else can't support those who have come to try to find a better life. Yeah. That's, that's the tough question that I think a lot of people, like, you know, I don't think there's anybody on this panel that would see the, the average illegal immigrant who's here currently uh, with a family, working, doing the best they can to survive that would want to look at that family and say, out. Right? Because right. the average person isn't heartless. Right. Right? We all want to say, oh man, that baby or the young kid, we want them to have a good mm -hmm. education and everything. Right? But at what point? If there was three billion of those, right? And now it's it, they, they would be hardworking if they could, but there's not three billion jobs in America. We already have a pretty big unemployment op problem in America, right? And, and we hide the stats on that. That's a whole other show, right? We call them underemployed. We call them uh, 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 over-educated uh, for employment. Uh, the, all, all sorts of different phrases that we use now to hide the actual unemployment stat, right? There's a big problem. And, and I will take that to another thought that uh, unemployment uh, is the leading cause of crime in America. But most so, illegal immigrants are not unemployed. Uh, they uh, want to work. Right, they, but so, yes, I'm not taking that, I'm not, right. I, what I'm, I'm not so, saying that there isn't a desire for the, I'm saying that mm -hmm. everyone wants to work. But they're, so they're I'm not, not taking that not, away I'm, from I'm them. I'm trying to say that they're not the one who's needing the support, the, the system, they're not the one who's like trying to take advantage of our our system saying like we need yes it's know, not about Medicare. taking advantage I, right. i'm not and saying also, from the same advantage standpoint. also the fact that uh whatever trump is doing it's sort of retroactive We're, what you're saying is we need to tighten up mm -hmm. tighten up our immigration law so we need to stop people from illegal immigrants from coming in that's fine but we're right now the people are very upset because these kids these children they got they they were brought in here and then they didn't do anything wrong, and then Trump is trying to send them all back. It's pretty much they already got here. And then they they have not touched the criminal system. So and then you're, so you're trying to, you know, send them all back. You're not trying to tighten up the immigration system. You're not you're not putting up you're not putting up the high the border like you you, you promised. Not that I'm pro border, but I'm just saying that you're pretty much just sending people back. It re like regardless what they have done or not done. So so let me ask. This this is why I, I, I went to an extreme argument on purpose. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. To say I, I know. I, I, I'm definitely not making the case that, that illegal immigrants who are here now are lazy or aren't looking right. for a work or you know, aren't working or whatever else. Right. That's not the case. Yes. I'm I'm absolutely not yes. making that statement. Let's say that there are three billion of them rather yeah. than thirty million. Okay. Right? And regardless of their desires to work, and regardless of the fact that they have good morals, they're not committing crimes or whatever else, they, they're simply not 3 billion jobs in America. Right. 
So tying right? up the, the immigration so, system, tying up the, the, the border, you know, control. But is there a point for you at which you say there's a billion people here that have to go? No, I mean, if there are... So you would take in three and a half billion. It's very traumatic. Once, especially, it's not... You're not saying, like, okay, you just got here and you got to leave. He's not doing that. He's pretty much saying, it doesn't matter how long you've been settled here. You have friends and family, you have distances. Okay, so let me You have a life that's a good here point. and then you got to leave. So that's, that's a... Very, that's, that's just... That's heart-wrenching and that's... That, to me, that's... Illogical. Okay, if they're so not, if they're not doing anything wrong. They have business. They're promoting the economy. They're or they're going to school. They're paying for the school, and or it doesn't matter whether they're paying for the school or not. They are potentially could be, you know, contributing for the economy. Why are you sending them away? You you should be doing something if you want to prevent people from coming. You want stricter immigration law. Do that. You, you want stricter border control, do that. But don't send people who are already living here away. You use a good word when you said retroactive. Like it's a, the, this, the plan to go back and undo and up, uproot these families right. that have established their lives, their lineages. Um, there should be some protocol to just evaluate the system. Exactly. System That's what the Obama administration and was doing, and I and I felt like that was the right thing to do. You evaluate. You don't just say you're a good citizen. You've been good all your life, but still you gotta leave. You gotta give up everything you have in America, and you gotta leave. That's just cruel. That and and that does that makes no sense. You're, and he is a businessman. Right. As a That's business which, person, you don't do that. You don't. You don't give up on valuable assets. So, so let you me ask you a question. You valuable assets. He's got. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Uh, yeah, I, so, uh, I, I, what I'm trying to ask is, like, it's not that I disagree with the point you're making. Mm -hmm. What I'm, what I'm, trying to get at is, uh, at what point you have a, an American citizen who was born here, lives here, was here legally. Uh, had whatever generations before here, etc. They're not employed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They want to work. They have the same desire to work mm -hmm. as the person who came here illegally. Okay. The person who came here illegally is here uh, as a good person. They're not breaking the laws. Uh, they're they're doing all the right stuff. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say I'm no longer willing to keep the citizens who are currently here unemployed? in order to give jobs to those who come here illegally. At what point does that tip on the scale for you? Can I say? Absolutely. Okay. Please chime in. I'm, I'm, I'm just, throwing that out to everybody. I, I'm talking to Gwen a lot because she's, she was the one bringing up the point. But absolutely, everybody respond. Like the jobs argument to me is something that I don't agree with because okay. the economy and the whole world is changing, it's evolving. The type of jobs that we would get um, 20, 30 years ago aren't really available as much as, you know, they used to be. So it's the same thing with the, with the education system. Like people will get college degrees and they will feel unhappy because they will be out of work or they won't be able to support themselves with their bachelor's degree. But 20 years ago, a bachelor's degree was like a golden ticket. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to address what's causing the change in the economic climate more than looking at the uh, immigrants as a scapegoat. Not that I believe that it should be just open the floodgates and let everyone right. come in, but I just uh, don't want to blame, place the blame wrongly on the immigrants. I think that the jobs that they're doing, they're, they may, you know, it's, I'm sorry. I like what you're saying. <laughs> Go through <laughs> and evaluate and assess everybody, like, right. yeah. and, 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 you know, what's, and find out, like, strategically, literally, uh, find a way to comb through systems. <laughs> Yes, a lot of people. <laughs> but, it's a I mean, lot of people. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of people. Presently, thirty to forty million. Well, wow. okay, That's so so to okay, but to focus on, um, you know, you saying at what point do we say yeah, enough? Enough. We got to at least have a cap. Yeah. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. like, I can respect that that concept. Let's get a cap. Let's say you know, uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna allow whatever, whatever the number is, whatever the date. You know the cutoff point, tick tock, the game is locked, and nobody can can get in. Um, but and, <laughs> sorry, 
fine. That's, that's, that's good. good. That's good. Beautiful. But in the in, in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, we need to deal with the people here. Yeah. The people here. The people and no, here. Joe, everybody does not want to work. Sorry. Now that is true. That's true. That's true. Some <laughs> people, and I'm going to be giving yeah, the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah, I'll say some that. people that. want but to pimp the system, yeah. so we got to find those. We got to get get with those exactly. pimps. Those yeah. systems. That's pimps. a very valid point. And I take advantage and I feel, through generations, and we got to deal with right. that. that and and cool. I feel like survival the fittest. The survival Job market is more like it's all about competition. Mm -hmm. So. You want to throw yourself in a competition and compete with the rest of the people, the population in the United States, and get that job. That that's what you have to do. You do whatever you have to do to do it. Hmm. But that has nothing to do with sending people away back to their country once they already established their root. So establish, define, establish. Go ahead. You, oh, sorry. No, I, I I had a few points that I wanted to okay. please make. Kwame's right. been quiet. Yeah. yeah. So um, I tip. I typically am. I don't really have much to say. Um, and you're on the show, why? I'm messing with the neuroscientists over here, you know. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not quite a neuroscientist yet. I don't I'm already giving credit. So. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, you know, what I wanted to say was I had a few, like, three points that I wanted to make regarding what you brought up uh, when you first went on this, this rant, so to speak. Um, <laughs> the first one is... Before you went crazy. Right? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. Um, while there is uncontrollable <laughs> amounts of illegal immigration, you know, occurring right now. I expect, and this may be a wild expectation, the establishment or Americans in general to be a little empathetic to people immigrating into a country that they weren't necessarily asked to come to. You know what I'm saying? Because everything that we rep everything that we stand for, like we built on Hashtag. something that I imagine that most Americans wouldn't agree with twenty seventeen. Right, I don't think anybody would agree with coming into a country and, ba depending on what you believe about the stories, <laughs> like just murdering people and saying this is mine. Cool, we are all benef benefiting from all of that. Now, an interesting idea that came up. Oh, actually, that's not one. Ash, can you put the uh, comments back up on the screen? Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. The next thing is, I mean, based on what I understand, is that there's enough building material in the United States alone to provide enough. To provide like homes enough for every family in the entire world, or maybe maybe that's a stretch saying the United States, but North America at least, mm -hmm. to where you can provide enough. There's enough building material for everyone to have a nice home. There's no lack. That that, that perception of scarcity is like a desperate illusion that that exists right now within, I think, our society and our world. Right. Um, so as far as you know, not being enough room. Now there's not enough room in America for sure. <laughs> like we're gonna have to spread out. But one thing that. Uh, one idea, I guess, that came to me, and I'm no politician or anything like that, but if there are 43 million people here that we, you know, maybe can't necessarily accommodate, as far as the job thing goes, I mean, automation is going to replace, you know, one third of the jobs that exist right now within the next 20 years. So it's not going to be a matter of, um, you know, if people are qualified or if people are just human beings are going to become obsolete in the workforce, and automation is going to take over the majority of I production. Agree. So. It's not a matter of I have of a like, question for on that. Yeah, and, and I don't uh, I, Go ahead. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll finish and I'll yeah, go back. Yeah, and, and the last thing is, um, well, oh, so the idea that came up was, you know, because, you know, as someone looking to maybe expand, if, if I was the president of the United States or, or working in that administration, I have 43 million people here that would like the benefits that this country provides. If I, we can't sustain them here in America, even though I think at this point I think we're good, but like let's say it got overwhelming as you're you know proposing, and but they want to come here, they want to represent America. Let's create relationships maybe with Mexico, where we have a lot more influence in Mexico than you know than we do currently. But we are able to send a lot more influence I, in I Mexico, love, say yeah, than China. We can franchise. You know, the, you know, it's just to franchise the globe, the, if, franchise. if you will. But like, yeah, um, because you know, Amer world. America does represent, um, I guess, you know, opportunity and, and expansion and the ideas of being able to express yourself freely and all, all those things. Which the you know, American dream. The American dream, right? Why not spread that idea to oh, all these third world countries that are trying to come here? And the, I mean, that just makes sense to me. Okay, so my question is this: Yeah. Uh, you yeah. said, cheers. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> a great point. Yes. Uh, yes, all very salient points. Um, <laughs> great word. Great word. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Um, my, my question is this. 
I 100% agree, and I, because I've been steering my own son down this path to, to learn automation uh, coding, and, and mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a computer geek, um, and which I embrace. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I, I firmly believe AI and, and uh, automation are, are two massive fronts. Yeah. Uh, when you deal with people coming into the country illegally, uh, very often those people um, will be the least opportune to employ in the fields of AI and, of course, I mean, and, yeah, and automation. I mean, educated and right. And so we're, we're, we have an extra hurdle in that um, the ability to, first of all, like, I, for, if we had the ability right now, there was a wall around America, and, and, and we could stop all immigration, we could control it perfectly, and everybody had to apply and all that sort of thing, who would we want to bring in, right, into the country, right? Is it the uneducated poor, or is it the person who is already skilled and, and gifted? Mm -hmm. I think a combination. Right? Um, and, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that, but at what percentage? That would be, right? right? Uh, because right now, I, part of what's enhancing the problem, and I, I said this earlier, crime is largely populated by unemployment. I mean, it's an old idle hands, yeah. idle hands kind of a thing. Yeah. I, I, I think a well, lot of people yeah, who are... I have, I have a point for it. I have a point for it. I, I think uh, folks who would normally uh, not be criminals, if they had the opportunity to, to yeah. pursue a you know, normal, yeah. gainful life, you know, there would at least be a good percentage of people who would drop out of the criminal element yeah. if they had opportunity, right? right? Yeah. And so, you know, when we're bringing in people competing for that position, I feel like we're already shortcutting America to begin with. Yeah. And I think America has the best opportunity to, to help the world's poor by first America being strong itself, right? And so how do we fix that then with dealing with, if our future is heading to automation, mm -hmm. which I firmly believe, uh, and, and AI, yeah. which I firmly believe, uh, and, and cryptocurrencies and, and a, a number of things on the technological front, how do we handle from an immigration, immigration standpoint thinking about that? Yeah. We have H-1 visas, uh, H-1B, I think it's what it is, uh, where uh, it's already highly educated people that we're yeah. drawing into the country. Um, the ones that get to go to Earth too, huh? The ones that get to go to Earth too, right? <laughs> yes, um, but yes. The, the point. Earth I, too. I guess my, my response yes. would be um, one, th and I, I've gone to a couple events this year. Um, at, I was at I was in New York, and I was at the the CUNY like the City College of University of New York. Yeah, that's what it's called. And there was an, a talk that I just happened to stumble upon, and they were talking about what's called universal base income. So automation is going to get to the point where, I mean, human physical involvement is going to become, like I said before, 100% irrelevant. And, and Elon Musk, obviously Tesla, talks about this all the time. We're, we're going to have to provide some form of base income for peop people that are a part of society that are on the forefront of automation. And, of course, that's going to throw hundreds of thousands of red flags of, you know, socialism and, and different things like that. But it's, it's not a matter of, like, um, you know, what you think is right or wrong, what you think is the most productive. It's like we, there's nothing we can do. If people aren't needed to produce products, aren't needed to create the, the systems and protect, you know, e even, even with, like, you know, crime and stuff like that. I mean, if we're not needed, then what do we do? We can't just... All just because what you said, and then that's where you get all these ideas about um, what's that movie called, Pur The Purge, and stuff like that. When people have nothing to do, and the, and then they're also deprived of necessities like food, water, and shelter because they don't have any. They will become or, violent. That's what ha I mean. That's just animal nature. Yes, if you will. I've got to eat. Torian had a, a great point so, about earlier. The one about the kids. I mean, I'm telling them. you guys, this this to me, this this to me right here, is the mission of the show. Yeah. This this is the mission of the show. We all came together as a group of people who, before this show, said, I don't know much about the subject. Yeah. Yet, some fantastic freaking conversation taking place. Yeah. I, I love this. This is the, the point of the show, guys, that we can have differing views. Gwen, Gwen and I have had differing views. <laughs> Kwame and I have had differing views. All right. Yet, yeah, does it look like we're fighting? <laughs> like, you know, we're like... Yeah. Busting out the fist, you know, <laughs> it's it's trying to understand where the other person is coming from and where it leads is fantastic. It's fantastic. 
it opens up opportunity. It opens up ideas. That's what this show is about. Yeah. And you guys are chiming in with brilliant comments. Brilliant comments. So I'm going to get to some of them. All right. Um, Ash, scroll down at least. I'm going to try to zoom through some Who of these as fast. Who is writing on behalf of Why and No Wine Show? Uh, David. That was probably David. 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 Uh, <laughs> he's disagreeing with you. He's Yes. <laughs> okay. So, 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 so <laughs> he's telling me I'm promoting a false narrative. <laughs> yes. It, it, which is the, that's again the point and of the show is to, yes. to 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 talk about yes. and bring up these different ideas. Yeah, unless you so, can't you can't you can't tell me awesome. what percentage of the hospital bill unpaid is is it's done by Im illegal immigrants. Okay, so so real yeah. quick for the audience's sake, because they don't necessarily see the comment on the screen, <laughs> right, right, uh, yeah. I will say uh, um, <laughs> David Pipkin, regular visitor on the show and contributor on the page, is is responding. <laughs> so you may see his comments uh, as the wine no wine show right now. David is calling Gwen out, <laughs> and David said, I "Love you, <laughs> Gwen. Gwen, you are uh, 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 absolutely promoting a false narrative. All you have to do is look at the, at only the Harris County hospital bills." They go unpaid, which become the responsibility of taxpayers to pay them back. Over a hundred million dollars per year in unpaid hospital bills in public hospitals yes, by alone. Whom? By uh, who? By uh, who? How and, and, much of them uh, are being unpaid by illegal, illegal immigrants? immigrants. You uh, David, don't have that statistic. Hang, right? hang on, David. If you have the statistic <laughs> handy or can look it up, go ahead and chime in. I will say, uh, I knew the statistic in California: forty-six okay. billion dollars a year. Uh, in California, directly connected to illegal immigration in healthcare uh, uh, alone. Perhaps $46 billion. Dollars. So, perhaps it's because it's a social security number. Hang on, hang on. If we have it set up, a better system set up for them, they wouldn't have been unpaid. They okay. want to pay. They want to be a better citizen. They want to work. Hang on. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's chomping at the bit. I know. I'm going to address comments. So I'm just, I'm addressing comments. Okay. So scroll up, if you will, Ash. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Julia Marie said, yes, I agree. Find a way to citizen citizenship. Oh, my gosh. Why? I tried to say citizenize. The one. Uh, citizenship. Find a path to citizenship and tighten up immigration. Absolutely. Uh, Torin said, if a, this is a great question. If a person robbed a bank 10 years ago to feed his children but never robbed a bank again, should they be dissolved of their crime if caught later? Even if they are hardworking, good citizens, should they pay for their crime? No. That's an analogy. You want to answer every question. <laughs> Don said, Gwen said, Trump is sending the back. Ash, yes. you keep moving it when I start I reading. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I had to blame it on my daughter, and she corrected me. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, it, it moves when people comment, so I have a hard time reading. Uh, Gwen and said Trump is sending them back. He didn't. He said Con Congress fixed it, and I'm giving you a deadline of six months. Okay, so is is Trump calling them out? Is Trump calling Congress out on this? Because they've been kicking the freaking can down the road for 40 years. And now he's... And now it's a problem. Now it's a problem, right. Uh, so he, he's calling them out. That's Don's point. Uh, David then chimed in and said, that's only the beginning when you look at unemployment benefits, welfare, public school, green stamps, illegal immigrants are a huge drain on our resources. Uh, I think he meant food stamp. Uh, green stamps were ba way back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David is showing his old card right now. <laughs> I remember green stamps. <laughs> you remember green stamps? No. No! Oh, oh. They were the book. The yeah. book. Yeah. Yes. You the book where you would walk around, walk in the store. And yes. Yeah. It was like for coupons. Yeah, it was yeah. like coupons. Got yeah, coupons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, illegal immigrants are huge drain on our resources. That doesn't mean that all immigrants are bad, but the system that allows for illegal immigrants to benefit from their illegal act is costing more than you can calculate. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Russell, automa uh, automatic. Russell, automatic. Our countries, other countries like Australia, where if you come in illegally, they put you on a boat and ship you to prison camp <laughs> where the press isn't allowed. Wow. Holy cow. Well, wow. That, that's tightened border control. Uh, that's tightened border control. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, Gwen will surprise you, Russell. She'll, she'll, she'll throw you a total right curve. This is the girl who said she was not for the death penalty because it wasn't severe enough. <laughs> So, so, you gotta watch her. She might be all for that prison camp where the videos are not allowed. Uh, 
<laughs> no <laughs> selfies in prison. That's right. <laughs> Julie Marie said, <laughs> if you live in America and you want a job, you can find one. There's no name on any position. Uh, you better wake up and get yours or someone else will. I don't know that I agree that if you yeah. want a job, you can find one. I, I've, uh, I've seen I people on well, that front. I think, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence, Julie, because I, I have a hustle mindset. I will right. make money. That's the difference. There, right. That's the difference, the Joe. The, yeah. Okay, so can everyone get a job or can everyone make money? Can you yeah. find a job? If you can't find a job, can you have a hustle? Can you a, a, right. a legal? Can you make money? Can you make Legally. something Absolutely. happen yeah. Yeah. in business? Can you go out and create or, or yeah. find a skill? that is needed, that is valuable out in the marketplace and package it and go out and sell it. If you can't find a nine to five, you can become a nine to five. I agree, I agree. Uh, scroll up, Ash, scroll up, scroll up. Uh, I'm gonna try to fly through some of these. There's been a lot of great comments. Uh, the U US had the strongest vetting process in the world before Trump. Dreamers aren't stealing jobs or aren't even eligible for welfare. Mm -hmm. Immigrants are being blamed for a changing job market. If you don't want to accept new applications for DACA, fine. Don't feed me the line that it's it's Congress problem, uh, and you wash your hands of it. If you are the president, address the country, reassure the dreamers, and tell the U.S. you will work with Congress to assure that the system gets reworked. Uh, he probably didn't do this because he wants them to be deported. Uh, Michael, I love that comment. That's a great uh, one, uh, here's the problem: Congress hasn't done anything. They haven't. Uh, they, they've absolutely freaking kicked the can down the road, like Torian said, uh, for like 40 years now. Uh, literally since Reagan was president, and that's been a minute. Uh, so Because this is, it has, has benefited so much. It's like we're double talk. It's like double talk. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Uh, Ed Camp, third world immigrants are coming here wanting us to adapt to them. Uh, there's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, I, I was I was a fan of a guy named Michael Savage, uh, and and he has a, a comment: language, culture, borders. Uh, the idea is that um, if if you're coming to America, uh, be American. I hate the hyphenated American name. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, if you are coming here, then embrace the culture of here. You left where you were for a reason. Right. Not necessarily so, to, to leave the culture behind, though. Look, look, yeah, it, it, so you can it, you can have your culture, right? But embrace here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you have to abandon your culture. That's not what I'm saying, okay. right? Embrace the culture here. Mm -hmm. If you are seeking what America has to offer, right. then embrace what America has to offer in right. all its fullest senses. Right. So anyway, so yeah, so that's Ed Kant's point. Roger, uh, I love Gwen. <laughs> Roger is Gwen's number one fan. He says this on a regular basis. Uh, Torian says he can debate both sides, uh, yeah. and, and I feel the same way, Torian. There's really valuable points uh, on both sides. Uh, Ed, I don't think you understand what third world even means or the real root cause of why resource-rich countries are dirt poor. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Until you've been to a really poor uh, third, uh, third world. world country, you, you cannot really appreciate it uh, <laughs> for what, appreciate what America has. I mean, hell, I was without electricity for three days, and I'm, and I'm like, crying, and, you know, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> Torian says, pay for a family member to apply for visa, and, and we are at $1,800 before he decided to switch to Canada. This is not a cheap process, uh, wow. no doubt. Do you all know you Canada look cross-eyed when you read the board? <laughs> wow. that's, that's Ed. Uh, okay, that's so Ed. We, we almost got through them all here. Uh, Don, the president doesn't make laws as, as much as the previous president thought he should. Congress does. And the president telling the Department of Justice and the CBP, I don't even know what CBP is, forgive me, uh, to stand down and not enforce a law uh, through executive order is itself illegal. The blame is not with the current president. It's with his predecessor that didn't follow the Constitution to make, a cha to make or change a real law. Again, it must be law. If we aren't going to follow the laws, why have them? All right. So th this is the congressional. Always blame it on Obama. Con con congressional on Obama. point, and and my daughter <laughs> went off the comments. Um, She's googling it for me right now. CBD. I thought is this a CBD. border patrol something? I have no idea. Patro Patro um, C CPB CPB. What is the CPB? <laughs> oh, it was right there. Uh, Customs, Customs and, and Border, border protection. protection. Wow. Yeah. Okay, there's too many freaking acronyms in government, I'm just going to say. <laughs> All right, 
Uh, so anyway, we, we, we're past six o'clock already, um, and, and time flies. This is a subject we we got some great comments going on here. I, I don't even want to I don't even want to cut it off. Which you know that's that's a, a great thing about our show. Uh, we don't have to cut off. We can keep going if we want to. Uh, we have more wine. We, we have more wine. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get Kwame to go in the other room and grab the box wine. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, yeah. That was really good. Right. right? Yeah, so we've got some good good. box wine. I'm just gonna, you know, hey, that's how the show rolls. Uh, <laughs> Riley, I have to leave by six thirty. Do you? Okay, we got twenty minutes then. DACA protects the children who were raised among citizens. Mm. At the end of the day, they are more American than anything else. Yeah. Uh, Ed Camp says, assimilate. I think that was a reference to my comment about embrace the American culture. Assimilate. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, you know, I, I, America is absolutely strong and fantastic because we're a melting pot of so many different cultures and, and dynamics. Right. But at the point at which the culture that you left becomes all you're about, mm -hmm. and you, to the point that you ignore the present culture, we have a problem, and we're seeing that in France, we're seeing that in Germany, we're seeing that in London, we're seeing that all throughout Scandinavia, where there's serious problems with is? a certain body of, of uh, people mm -hmm. who insist on their culture being the culture to the point of rejecting law, re rejecting everything else because of their viewpoint. Um, so I, I don't want to see that same thing happen here. I, it's, I don't think it's at the same level that we're looking at in Europe. But when you start talking about bringing people into the country uh, at, at a very large scale that represent a big percentage of our population who have a history of being that way, it is a concern for me. Yeah. It has nothing to do with, like, oh, he's, you know, uh, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about Islamic, you know, so I, like, I have to say it because I want to say it's not about being an Islamophobe. It's not about being a racist or, or you know, not, not that there's a race of Islam. Anyway, I hate it when people say that. You're just being a racist. Uh, tell me what race Islam is. <laughs> right? Because last time I checked, it, it involved quite a few races. Colors. Uh, color the colors and, yeah, you name it, right? But so, so there's, there's, these are, that's, it, that kind of is the same point that I was making about that. At what point do we say, I would love to take in all the world's poor, mm -hmm. right? And I would love for everybody to have so a standard of living. It just is be work. unfeasible, yeah. right? So now I have everybody helping me out, Customs and Border Patrol. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, okay. Customs and Border Protection. So, yes. Yeah, so finally we got it right. So anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So you let, we can wrap up. We've got some good wine here. We can wrap up. R closing thoughts yeah, uh, as, as we go around the room here and uh, um, give our final thoughts on all this lovely dialogue that we've had today so far. Um, yeah, and, um, and and you didn't get a shameless plug, so we have to give you a shameless plug. So I get my shameless plug yes, right now. Yes. So don't, so Wait, is she going to get an invoice after? for it after? Yeah, right. <laughs> after <laughs> guests <laughs> guests don't get an invoice. We we only invoice off air. You know, oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Go yeah, ahead with yeah. your, your points, and then I'll come back with my yeah. plug. I'm playing, of course, because we're still on the topic. Yes. Um, as I mean, if if I were the political influencers of our country, so, how, you know what? Closing question: How do we solve the problem? Yeah, I, I, think, I think I got it right now. Um, and, and it depends. I mean, I, I don't know anything about Mexico specifically as far as how their government's run. It's south. Besi besides that, I mean, I mean, as far as like um, <laughs> that's what I know. Culture and South is always and stuff, challenging, right? Stuff like that. You know what they want. I know the big points. Yeah, but there are um, there's there's a notion of of the ten percent where once ten percent of a population or ten percent of a country or ten percent of a uh, organization believe in a future philosophy or a future idea or a future, I guess, way of life, that serves as like the tipping point for it to scale through the rest of the population, right? So it's not even a matter of if they're like actively participating in this new way of life. It's if they believe that's what's coming, that, I mean, it just scales kind of through the consciousness in a way, right? And so there are like 12 million, 12 million illegal immigrants here in America that are actually from Mexico. Right, I just—I mean, that's googled it. So that's what—that's what Google says. I don't know, um, but there are also 127 million people in Mexico right now. Twelve—that's like ten percent. That's like ten percent, like right? So if, if I'm American, then I'm not. This—this this sounds—I mean, to me, it sounds wild coming out of my mouth. But like, 
if I'm America and, and I want to solve my problem of immigration, well, at the same time having a, instead of just kicking people out, and I want to make sure I maximize, you know, as an opportunist of, you know, as America is, mm -hmm. the opportunity that America Inc. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, I would send them back with some leverage related to our country. If, if I want to send if I have to, right? Because if it's too much, we can't handle it, right? Um, or even mm -hmm. maybe before then, right? Send them back with some type of um, leverage that allows them or their beliefs about what they want that country to be. Because I don't know anything, that, I don't know that there are any problems in Mexico, per se, that are just like, fundamentally just like inhumane or anything like that but let's say that they were and there's some value that america could bring to the country i'd send them back with that agenda essentially and you know so i, I let, love let what, it happen what i am going to dovetail and comment 100 percent because i feel like if america being the powerhouse that it that's is what I, that's what I being the you know and now we've got the big business guru in position to create <laughs> right to create all of these alliances mm -hmm. um we need to take those alliances take those um al uh, alliances and those relationships to another level of business and create it, it's not it should be all about leveraging it should be yeah. because instead of robbing and raping other countries That's why don't we leverage the relationships create the relationships you know take the hoods off and anyway um, <laughs> Leverage the relationships, create alliances, yeah, and, I mean, and, I mean, and send and and yeah, and and you know we can still have a cap as far as the influx. Yeah. But what since we want to go retroactive and send everybody, send all the babies back and everybody uproot and just send them all back, send them back with something that they can actually use. And uh, I mean I don't really necessarily say send them back, but definitely prepare them. In, instill in them what is great about America. Like if I plant a seed, my, my only hope is when I leave here to leave empty and light as a feather. We have so much to offer. Mm -hmm. Let's really offer it. Um, let's take a different heart to the situation and add value so that they can go back and spread that amongst their cultures. You know, Absolutely. send them back with a package. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of package? Mm -hmm. It's just an idea. Well, I, I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't thought that far. Says several times. <laughs> like, well, sorry, you gotta go. Dual, but form, it, you know what? Some form of dual citizen. I don't it, know. It should, right. Yes, uh, maybe dual citizenship. You can visit. Maybe, well, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't say. Yeah, yeah. Those are for, I mean, those are first thoughts, but it's just some, it should something be of, like tangible value, leverage. Back. Something tangible. You know, they can do. I, I think. I think instead of sending them back with nothing, I think they should be able to kind of have a. There should be a bridge so that we and it should be a strategy to be able to leverage that bridge. so that you can have influence of another of an, amount of land. you you know yeah. with their it's power a, numbers it's a absolutely tough question it's a tough question you know uh, they they did the easy part um, yes please help yourself oh please uh, um, I'm, I'm being a bad host I apologize um, <laughs> um, I like some more wine please help yourself um, you know, when, during Reagan's era, they did the easy part. They didn't do the hard part. Um, they said, all those who are here, we're going to give mm -hmm. amnesty, etc. And then they didn't fix the problem of how they got here to begin with. Yeah. Well, they, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so mm -hmm. our, our nation's laws, we have a, a whole immigration process. It's, it, there's, a, there's a whole process in place. That's where do we fix the problem is there. Uh, it, I'm not a fan of building walls. I, I don't. First of all, I don't trust government. Period. <laughs> right. right? right? Walls keep people in just as much as they keep people out. Ask the East Germans. Yeah. Right. I'm not a fan of freaking walls. No one wants to be boxed in. Right. right. So, uh, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> it, it, if you removed the thing that drew the people here who are willing to break the law to get here illegally, i.e. companies that will look the other way when you don't have proper documentation mm -hmm. so I can pay you in cash under the table, not pay taxes. Mm -hmm. If you fix that part, now the job's not there anymore. People are no longer willing to break the law to get here. Mm -hmm. Right? Definitely. So there's stuff that we can do to fix it. Right. right? But that's the hard part that people don't want to do because the housing industry loves freaking cheap labor. Thank you. 
right? Especially in Houston, Texas. Shout out to H Town. Right? Mm -hmm. I would. We would probably yeah, shut down yeah. half the builders in town if we started, uh, you know, <laughs> checking all in the uh, current employee roster to make yeah. sure they had socials. Right? Uh, <laughs> that, like that's a reality. All of the repairs that are about to be done. Like or that. all the repairs that are about to be done. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? So, you know, we look the other way. You know, we, we like our uh, iPhones that are made in China with sli slave labor. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People Please. Get, people uh, get really, the, um, wow. That's, so that's, another, that's a whole Yeah, that's, that's a whole other show, right? Wow. We, we, we like it, these things as long as it doesn't it. interrupt our world, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. there's hard decisions that have to be made in order to fix the problem that will impact our lives, right? And, you know, uh, it, it does go back to the law is the law. I, I, I agree with that. The law is the law, right? We have to be fair and equal about how it's employed to all. Yeah. And then we have to be unwavering in it. Mm. We can't, we can't, well, I choose this law to, to follow and I choose this one not to follow. Well, it's, that's how they do, and, that's and, how Christians do with scripture. Uh, well, I mean, that's, uh, that's another subject, <laughs> right? And, 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 and I just gave a specific <laughs> example about it. We choose to say, I want to follow the immigration law but I choose not to follow the employment law when it comes to looking the other way about not having a social and employing somebody who's here illegally because I can pay them under the table and not pay taxes and my business gets around cheaper. The business cheaper. owner is influential, so they have yeah. a bigger voice than the immigrant who doesn't have a voice. Right. Sure. Yeah. All right, so so I already I gave my closing thoughts right there, <laughs> which I normally don't get I'm to do. We're at 620. Plug, so don't go anywhere, y'all. So, Gwen, we're, go and, and then shameless plug. And... <laughs> And we're like 20 minutes over, it's so what? It's 20 minutes. Good. Hey, I, my closing is going to be short. I like what Obama administration was doing. I think it was just fine. You know, you, your government has to have a heart to make decisions feel like the government is sympathetic and the government's out there to protect the citizens and to to make us feel safe and, and they're... they're our value to contribute to the government because the government wants to keep good people in this country and either send bad people to jail or send bad people away to a different country or uh, tighten up the border control if you want. Just for my own curiosity, yes. bad person, yeah. here illegally, not working, are you okay with sending them out? Bad people. Yes. They have a criminal record. Send them out. Okay. That's a great yeah. way to yeah. start. Or That's yeah. a good. I, I just. I, I. I wanted to. Can, yeah. I, can I make yeah. a comment on that? Because putting him in prison is just another yeah, expense no. for taxpayers. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Big it is big business. It is big business. There's but another show. The point. Um, we should talk about that. Well, are, I want to talk about. They that. are. They are criminals. Yeah. The children aren't, but they are. Right. And someone brought up a point on theirs. They said if someone committed a crime ten years ago, but they were caught right ten years later. Right. You know, is that the crime? I mean, I think so. But that's according to the statute of limitations. Limitation. Yeah, yes, according exactly. to that specific crime. Limitation. Well, if he if he robbed the bank to feed his children, and is that okay? Is that okay? It's not. It's not. It's I mean, a, it's, it's not, not okay. His children, not, his children okay. didn't do anything, and they should right. be spared for they sure. Spared. I believe that. Yeah, that's what but I. But the parents should, and honestly, I honestly feel like parents would be okay with that as long as my children. Hey, you know what? I forgot who the high name profile criminal was that got busted, but uh, it was a husband and wife. And I, Simon and I, Clyde? No, no, current, current. <laughs> uh, um, and husband went to jail. They both got oh, sentenced. Oh, Teresa Judas Alien? Never mind. They both got sentenced. They both got a specific amount of time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because they had minors, uh, the husband went to jail first. And then the wife stayed home. And, and, and the wife the stayed home, and then the wife is set to go to jail, and then, then the husband will be at home. Um, there's, there's, we should there's, be able to be creative. There's with flexibility. Like that. I believe that, I mean, and, it, and it's a risk that they yeah. know they're taking. They're yeah. not. They're going to be like, oh, I'm, I've been here for ten years yeah. illegally, and now you're going to. They're not going to. I mean, no, no mindful human being would be like, I didn't do anything wrong, even though they know they, they came here illegally. And so, but the reason that they came is for their children. Yeah. So yeah, that and that was the parallel, obviously, that he was drawing with that question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saying, "Look, you oh, know, good question. person, since then has never done anything wrong, gainfully employed, etc." Does that negate the fact that he robbed the bank? It doesn't. Absolutely. 
But we still have the right to our legal system. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Gotta, yeah. gotta pay the price. Right. That's yeah. what assimilation Wrapping up point. My, my final point is that most of the immigrants, we talked about the mayor system, like, you know, we want people who are technologically advanced, who are educated, but most people do come here because they want a better life, and they don't have much in their home country. They have poverty, and they have all these things. So I love the idea of creating um, relationships with other countries where we, where we give them something that something of value, and where we build those alliances, and we say the world we're... <laughs> <laughs> we, I didn't mean to distract you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we create a world where uh, America can have influence in other countries in a positive way, and to build those um, those relationships, so that uh, so that immigrants can, you know, I love immigrants, and I'm definitely I don't feel I can't though, stand them. I don't <laughs> stop. I don't feel like <laughs> I, I am. Them. I'm, not I'm kidding. I'm, you know, I'm gonna run for politics like ten years from now, and they're gonna have this clip. I can't stand immigrants. <laughs> They're going to find it. Yeah, right. They're going to find it. I mean, yeah. No, the you thing is, uh, I don't believe that I'm an immigrant. Um, the, my, my heritage is a little bit different the way I was brought here, but I do feel like I Well, you immigrated from the country of Louisiana. <laughs> so. New Orleans. The country of the French Quarter. The, the French Quarter. <laughs> New Orleans. Yes. But uh, I do believe I that, uh, that diversity is beautiful. You know, I, I love diversity, and I definitely um, love my people from different countries. Mm, All right. So. right. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for tuning Come in to the Why No Wine Show. I'm going to give Cindy a shameless plug right now, but we're about to uh, rate the wine. I wanted to say, before you guys tune out or anything, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the show. We have a contest going on, and for those who have been on, you know, sticking with us here the whole show, you get the benefit, all right? Make sure you go to the Wine to Wine Show page, click on the Send Message button, and put in Contest Details and it'll tell you how to enter the contest. We're giving away a bunch of awesome stuff. I'm giving away a bottle of premium wine. Ooh, Fantastic ooh, stuff. Yes. I'm giving away, they haven't even been revealed yet. They'll be revealed on next week's show, the Grapehead shirt. I'm a Grapehead. Mm, Everybody who I'm watches the show head. is a Grapehead, right? And the back of the shirt says, in vino veritas, in wine, truth. <laughs> and just added today, uh, Planet Beach, uh, is going to be giving away a 30-minute free session of uh, what they call Hot Works Yoga. It's the uh, the hot yoga. Mm, so a 30-minute session for free. They charge 40 bucks for it. Uh, so that's going to be included in the package. So and with the the uh, weekly giveaway is going to keep growing. I'm I'm actively hunting for people. I got a few more people on the line uh, who are going to give away you know their services as a as a giveaway item. So you're definitely going to want to go. Click on the send message button, enter contest details, and it'll tell you how to enter the contest to be a weekly giveaway participant. So, shameless plug, and then we're going to rate the wine. Okay, so uh, my shameless plug, everybody, I'm having a couple of things. It's my birthday. Everybody, it's a birthday! It's a birthday. Woo! My birthday was yesterday. I'm still celebrating. I have We have a karaoke party tomorrow night at Spotlight Karaoke. Come by and try oh, to West Timer. Okay. West Timer and Fountain View. Um, I've got a spot for 40 people, but, I mean, you're welcome to try to come and get in. The whole <laughs> club will be open. So there will be a line outside. Be, yeah, but it's, it's all good. Come by, you know, and sing a song with me. Um, I'm also having on Sunday, so I can't turn up too much, because on Sunday I am having a three-hour live fibroid healing intensive for all of the ladies out there that have suffered uterine fibroid tumors, cysts, polyps, endometriosis, any womb disease, you name it. We're going to talk about it. I'm sharing my story of natural healing, how I was um, facing a hysterectomy by seven different doctor opinions, and I found the truth of healing, and I did not undergo the surgery. The healing is in the food, and I'm going to teach ladies all around the world how to heal their bodies naturally, how to undo every one of the symptoms, the heavy bleeding, the big bloated stomach, the really? depression, the all, I know this is not table talk necessarily, but we got to get to this uh, rating of the Joe's like, please don't talk about the bleeding. Um, so Speaking just, of bleeding, how was the wine? Go to, go to if you want to join my three hour fibroid healing intensive, if you want to purchase the book, please hit me up on Facebook, Cindy L. Goodson, um, Instagram, I am Cindy G, I am underscore Cindy G, uh, or go to 
uh, teamhealthnuts.com, www.teamhealthnuts.com to register for my three-hour live intensive. I'm going all in. Like, I'm going to show you how to heal those fibroids in 30 days, all right? There is Cindy G's shameless plug. Thank you for being on the show, Cindy. Thank you, Joe. So, Cindy and I are members of a wine club where we get these fantastic wines from all around the world, and we get to enjoy them every month. And I, uh, I have to say, uh, I, I'm skipping ahead here because I'm third in the voting chain. Uh, first, Ash, you see, yeah, Kate. Kate, who was on the show earlier, uh, cast her vote with a 4.5. Uh, you know what, I, I'm going to do this properly. Kwame, go ahead and give us your, uh, your vote. Four grapes, four grapes. All right, very good. Cindy G. So, and you can do like percentages, by the way. Okay. <laughs> if if you want to, I'm not trying to. Yeah. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do four and a well, half. Three point seven five. Three point seven five. You want to do a three point seven five? Yes. All right, three point seven five for Kwame. <laughs> this is my first time trying this, and I'm actually gonna give it a four and a half. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's got a good. Good beginning, good finish. Like I, I my palate um, is on fleek this weekend. Just oh. so y'all know, I'm yeah. It's tasting a lot of different varieties of mm -hmm. wines and cocktails and things. It's my birthday, so that's a good wine. Four and a half. I have to say, uh, I was I'm not a big Syrah fan, um, but man, for me the blend was really on point. Um, just a very, very smooth wine, not a nasty aftertaste. Uh, it, it, I really enjoyed it. Um, for me, 4.75. 4.75. Uh, not quite a 5. Uh, the Miravas uh, Malbec is still my That's 5. Still one. Yeah, it's still my number 5. But I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I, was, I, I really enjoyed this wine. It was a really, really pleasant wine for me. So. Yeah, I give it a four. All That's right. Awesome. Four. I give it a perfect five. Ooh. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm usually a um, Cabernet fan, but this blend, it was exciting. It was smooth. It, it was sensual. So <laughs> I would definitely give She it likes it. long walks on the beach <laughs> and uh, it, horseback it, riding. Absolutely. Bareback. <laughs> <laughs> Bear back. Bear back. The horse. Oh. The horse. Oh my gosh. No, that was great. I, I enjoyed it. So. Bye. What are y'all thinking? Wow. Y'all are all it's got invited warm to in the here. Karaoke party tomorrow night. Oh. Oh. Spotlight karaoke. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Oh. Nine a.m. Oh. Oh. We're nine going. We're nine a.m. to nine one in the morning. <laughs> All day party. Nine to one. Nine p.m. to one. Eight. Average wine rating yes, four point four two. Very mm -hmm. solid. Very nice. solid showing this week from the wine club. If you would like to get premium wines from all around the world for free, you need to hit me up because I can tell you how to do that. That's right. All right, guys. I want to thank you for being a part of the Wine No Wine Show. We are a mission-driven show here, trying to save America one civil conversation at a time. We talked about a subject that's lighting up social media right now, mm -hmm. and none of us are experts, yet we had a very intelligent conversation with disagreements, questions, everything else. To me, that's what America needs. If you believe that, like the page, share the page, and enter our contest to win, because you've already done two of the things you need to do to win. So... <laughs> Thanks for being a part of the show. Uh, Ashley, outgoing music. Yes. She, You know what? My daughter kicks tail at the whole darn show. I mean, no joke. She really does a phenomenal Ashley job. The, the one single point that I keep trying to get her onto is the closing music. Like, when, when I'm wrapping up with my, my you know, monologue at the end, I want the music going. So it's the one point. She's like 99% there, kicking tail and taking names. Hashtag Virgo. Hashtag Virgo. Uh. Yes. See you guys next week. We're out. <laughs>